Austin here. Wanted to do a trade recap going over OCX, a really fun trader today, uh, and a really frustrating one for me because I didn't get the result that I wanted. Uh, anyway, let's go over it. So OCX was one of my favorite kind of plays. I'm going to get into this. This is a pattern that um, I have grown to like. It's become one of my favorite long patterns. Uh, let's see here. These are my trades on it, and I, I kind of traded it ugly today. Um, yeah, so this was the day. So, n not going to lie here, this is so ugly. I was one of the stupid longs. You know, I was one of the guys that that bought this perk, that thought it was going up, you know, and, you know, I ate it. I ate it. I took this for a loss. I bought it here. There's actually a little sell there. I think that was a accidental because, because I got right back in. Yeah, so it's not so bad. Like, I, I didn't just initiate the trade up here. I, I bought down here, and I accidentally sold it, so I had to get back in. Um, but, um, yeah, I ate this trade, and, you know, I was very impatient with this entry. You know, I, I kind of let FOMO get the best of me on this trade in the sense to where I knew that this was a, uh, a setup that I liked. I knew that it was one that I wanted, and, you know, like, last last week or a few days ago CLRO didn't work out for me and this was kind of a similar play and I was like oh so you know that one didn't work this one's gonna work and that's you know that's a fallacy thinking of course but I was just so excited that I did FOMO it a little bit up here and I did pay the price but you know just you know I took a loss and then I waited for the setup to develop and just like all of my other long trades I like to see failed breakdowns you see a failed breakdown and then you know, then you're looking for the entry. And this particular one, sometimes I like to wait for inflection points, and sometimes I feel like they're not going to give them. And this one, I just had, I just had it in the gut that this wasn't going to give that secondary inflection point, um, like like the first one did. I, I wanted to buy it over this level here, and um, and I even I got a little bit greedy. I got a little, I went in a little bit early. This, this one, after it failed to break down, something just told me that the reclaim of 4 and VWAP all right here together, after a huge stuff, that it was just going to go. You know, it was just that gut feeling. like, and I, and I had just taken a loss, and I knew I wanted to be in. I had a nice risk here on 365, and, you know, we were below 4. And I knew that if we could get past, um, if we could get past, you know, the 440, that's very well decent risk to reward. Um, my idea for this trade was that it was going to test Psych 5, um, right off the open and so that's kind of why I got the FOMO here but um, anyway so on to the pattern this is this is a pattern that I like to call the power three and the power three means uh, the first aspect of the power three is a low float it's got to have a low float it's got to have high volume um, and I and I really like the high volume steady consolidation that we've been talking about. But sometimes just high volume can be enough proves that there's interest in the stock. And the third component is something that this had, uh, something that MRIN had and NBEV had, uh, something that um, something that is is very subjective though. Uh, the third aspect of this power three is a really juicy news. And, and sometimes it's fluffy, sometimes it's fluff news, but it, um, a, fluff, a, fl a news full of fluff can sound juicy. And, I, and this particular news, uh, you know, they, they had that, um, that successful results of their cancer, their, their lung cancer test. And the juicy part of the news was commercial availability in the second, in the second half of 2019. That was what did it for me. It, they also threw the billion word. And you have to be careful because there are a lot of words that a lot of PRs um, will put out. And, you know, you'll, you'll recognize these words as potential, like potential, potential revenue. And it even said that here, a potential market um, for like 4.7 billion or something. And I, and I took that into consideration. Uh, but commercial availability in this year uh, was something that I thought was going to catch um, a lot of ears and normally my rule of thumb for what I consider to be juicy news is normally news that I consider 
um, to um, not everyone's going to hear it on the first day. Such as this is something that like someone who's vaguely interested in stocks or someone your neighbor might bring this up to you or someone you meet at the bar. Someone's going to bring up bring it up to you if they know you trade stocks and say, hey, have you heard about that company that X? You know, MRIN had that deal with MRIN had that deal with Google. That's obviously a much better news. This one wasn't that good, but it was still excitable. And they've had that Coke news. You know, like Coke was getting. Um, it was you know rumored that Coke wanted to get into the uh, the cannabinoid beverage business, and Embev was the cannabinoid beverage company that was trading at the time that everyone had its attention on. So that's you know that's the news that sparked that. Um, so those are like you know top tier juicy news. This was a tier below, but still I found it enough to be excitable enough for me to, to count it into my power three. The low float, the high volume, uh, relative high volume relative to the float, and a juicy news, something that's going to get um, people excited and something that potentially can be heard about the next day by non-traders even. So uh, OCX had this and I want to point out something else. Um, is the volume um, before this? Before this? Uh, uh, before OCX started trading today, we had a significant amount of volume. We were um, in the first like pre-market and the first five uh, minutes of the day. I knew because this stock had never traded more than like two million. Oh, here it is. It's so it's so low you can't see it anymore. Let me just. See, the biggest volume day ever was about 2 million, and I knew going into the day that we were going to just smash through that. You know, we were already at like 500,000 or maybe almost close to a million pre-market. So I knew that like as a second the open, like we were going to just crush through that. And so going into today, I knew that this was going to have the biggest volume day it ever had, whether it was a red day or a green day. But to me, it had a low float. I knew it was going to be the highest volume ever that the stock had ever seen. And it had juicy news. So for, for me, that screamed, this is going to squeeze. This is going to this is gonna buy. This is going to be a buy. And in fact, I, I even hoped, I, I prayed that it was going to tank at the open so that we would get a squeeze. Because I would much rather it tank at the open, get, get a whole bunch of trap going on, and then I, I ideally, you know, buy that my classic consolidation setup. But when it kind of didn't tank at the open, I did get a little bit of FOMO. And you can see that right here. So once we got the tank, that's why I was willing, so willing to get back in because this tank, this failed breakdown, this trap is what I was waiting for in the trade. So I, I immediately got back in and even doubled and I was actually in pretty good size on this trade and I royally effed up. I, I don't, I to, you know, to the hour, like I still don't know exactly what I did. Um, sometimes on DAS when you hit your montage, your, uh, your size automatically goes, the size in the level two automatically redirects to your position size. I think that's what happened. I went to sell a piece and I accidentally sold the whole thing. Like I had that order already in, but right here when I was trying, I think I was trying to put in an order um, to sell a piece and I either, you know, it reverted to my full position size and I sold it all or I could have like, you know, I might have been trying to, I, I think I was trying to put a 480 order at the time, and I think I might have put 380, you know, and I, and I think I might have sold it, you know, all by accident there too. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but somehow I ended up selling all of my position, and I was screaming. <laughs> my, my broker, I, like my broker, I was, I was just livid. I was, I was yelling in good fun. I was like, oh no, this is so awful. But anyway, so I missed that huge move. Anyone who knows me, this was my scout part of the trade. This would have been the trade. And I would have tried to hold the home run for longer. Oops. Oh, it's... Das said it was time for the arrows to go. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's it's about that time. Hey, yeah, it's 7, it's 7 p.m. here in Hawaii. Uh, that's when the arrows goes, goes off, apparently. Anyway, wow, that was unique timing. Um, anyway, but I, I, know, I probably would have sold that other third there. But anyway, that's that's what I wanted to go over with OCX. Is this was kind of what I like to call the power three play. It had everything. It had the low flow. It even had significant ownership. 
um, insider and institutional ownership. So that played a role too. Um, you know, it's all the pieces of the puzzle that, that fit together. But you can see, like, it's it's a very classic pattern. It's after you get, if you wait till after a failed breakdown and to get in, like, you know, a reclaim, a failed breakdown, all right here, these are all bullish signs, especially when, like, you know you're already, you already know going into the open that you're going to have the strongest volume day ever. <sighs> like, that's, that's, that's what um, I, I learned to stay away from on the short. And it, it's become my favorite, like one of my favorite long setups. A very similar trade happened, or idea happened with CLRO. And I want to talk about the difference between the two. I wanted to go over this trade before, um, but I didn't get to it. Oh, the, the arrows are gone. Oh, that was a couple days ago anyway. Anyway, this was my CLRO trade. Um, same, this day. This day here. Yeah, so where I kind of, same thing, I got a little bit of FOMO at the open because like I was using that 235 as my as my point of inflection. But this is why I typically don't like to buy at the open. Like I got dumped on, I, I don't know, I don't remember if it was a Furu or something, but like I definitely got dumped on. But again, once we had that like that failed, that failed breakdown, like um, I, I knew I wanted to get in because I knew CLRO was the same idea. CLRO... I knew that this was going to be the biggest volume day ever because the, the most ever before was like 2 million and we were already there at pre-market. So that was another factor. But the one difference that I learned that I wanted to share with you guys is the range on this stock was very low. You know, like the, the range of this stock, the daily range, it's it's typically not very good. And it, you could tell in pre-market here it was moving like 20, you know 250 to 220. It was a 30 cent range. So... That, that that's not very high so when it i should have waited for it to tank first um to get to even try but when it did tank and here's my trade on it when it did tank um and i got in it's not reasonable f f you know on a stock with like 30 or 40 cents of range for it to go all the way to 210 and by the time it gets up to 250 without a significant pullback and that's not very significant for it to break, you know, it traveled this far because it traveled so far to get to this resistance level. I shouldn't have been expecting it to break. You know, I shouldn't have put too much faith in this breaking. Whereas uh, the OCX trade, it didn't have to travel that far. The OCX trade, um, you know, it had put in a significant range um, pre-market. It showed that it had a lot of range and you know, the high of the day or the pre-market high was 435 and 440 high of day. This isn't that, you know, that this isn't that big of a range compared to what it did pre-market and what it can do and, you know, what it can do on the daily. See, this isn't that big range. So a move from 360 to 4, I can expect that to break, you know, 440. I can expect this to break given the daily range and the pre-market range <coughs> and the... Uh, <coughs> and the liquidity of how it was trading this this morning. All that um, comes into factor and that I feel like that's a key difference between OCX and CLRO on, you know, they both had that biggest volume ever day um, thesis in the in thesis of the trade. <clears throat> but the difference was that the range wasn't there on CLRO and it essentially exhausted all of its range by the time it got up to the resistance. By the time this got up to the resistance, it had just recovered from a stuff. It's a very different context. So uh, that that's what I got today. Um, here's my trade on it one more time. Uh, like I know the arrows went away, but yeah, a little bit messy. Got FOMO, but once I got my failed breakdown and you know I got the tank first and then the reclaim, like all of my other successful long trades have been. Um, it worked out beautifully and I just, you know, I just effed it up. <laughs> you know, I, I, I thought about it all day today, you know, and I want to point out, by the way, that when I was trading this up, this up here and I had these gains, these, this is not on the same size as I'm putting on here. This is an elevated, now, this is way elevated now and I don't have the same comfy risk as I did in the morning. These trades are significantly smaller than these trades and and, and at the same time, like, you know, these these trades were actually a little bit smaller than these trades because I knew I, I was chasing after accidentally selling here. So, you know, 
buying into strength is, um, you know, I you always got to manage your size when you long when you buy into strength because dumps can happen. And so, like, I much prefer to buy perks off of a bottom with more size than, you know, perks into high of day or after it just ripped a new one and now it's up 200% on the day. These trades are significantly less size than when I feel I've captured the bottom. Anyway, I know that was a whole lot. That was a whole lot to swallow, but I hope you got something out of it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to PM me in chat or message me on Twitter or, you know, at me, <laughs> whatever.